ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम माय बाउ टू द लॉर्ड वसुदेवा जय टू यू फ्रेंड्स वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम द सेकंड चैप्टर ऑफ द भगवत गीता and coming in toward the end of it this is stanza or sloka 66 those with unsettled consciousness have no discrimination those who are unmeditative cannot know peace and for those who lack peace how is happiness possible most people are always i remember being in a barber shop in rome one time a few years ago and the barber was playing the television and i don't watch television and so i don't know about these things but watching or having it inflicted on me while i was having my hair cut i noticed that the scenes changed every 2 seconds when your mind is that restless that you can't dwell on anything for longer than 2 seconds when you've got to keep flitting 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 then how are you going to find any kind of peace and many people think well um when i'm uh i'm excited that's when i'm happy i remember i talked to somebody who worked in a rock and roll recording studio and many uh, uh musicians would come by her uh by every day and talk about all sorts of extremely worldly things and i i said what do you see in rock and roll and she said well it's now man it's now i said what about mozart oh mozart he's dead well the thing is that he was a lot more alive than she was or than the music she liked was happiness does not come from restlessness and this is what television tries to convince you that the more excited the more restless the more things you have the happier you'll be but you're not happy at the day's end you're unhappy unhappiness comes from restlessness how without peace can you ever know happiness happiness is not excitement happiness always if you if you identify it with happiness it will always lead to depression so you'll be happy one moment depressed the next and every 2 seconds you'll be shifting from one state of mind to its opposite don't go that route you've been going it for a long time for incarnations and it is still brought you and will always bring you to the final zero point the sum total of everything that you ever seek in this world will have to be zero when you can become calm in yourself then it isn't as i've said before you don't become apathetic you become centered and then you find that your own nature is bliss you don't become bored many people sort of with their feet tapping and looking around so what's next what's new you don't need news you need just that eternal now when you have peace in your heart when you can go everywhere and not feel that you need to go anywhere when you can go nowhere and feel that you're perfectly content going nowhere then you find that you have peace of mind and in that peace the more you get centered in your own self the more you know that peace of the soul let's read the next stanza a boat moving on water may be swept off its course by a gale so discrimination may be swept from its path by the vagaries of sensory il- influence and so it is that we are like a boat in a high sea and we have no direction no no control over it and one moment we're up next moment we're down we don't know where we're going when you have no control over your life there is there is a lack of security there's lack of certainty you don't know when uh you may lose all your money you may lose your home you may lose your wife or husband or children death is a constant threat just today a very dear friend of mine died of a heart attack and my feeling was there's no death i felt that uh she's happy wherever she is and that's the important thing and i felt that i felt that presence and felt she was happy 
is happy. And her husband is also is a dear friend of mine. And uh, of course it's hard for him when you lose your wife. And yet, finally we will lose everybody. There isn't anybody who will stay with you, and sooner or later you will lose them by leaving this world yourself. This world is a charnel house. Get away from this ocean of suffering and misery. Go to the one truth which will give you security forever. And only in that state can you actually see these souls. As Yogananda, when people died, he could go into the other world and see them there. This is the, uh, one of the benefits when you attain uh, union with God, that you're, you can go anywhere in the universe, see all your friends of past incarnations, see all those who are dear to you, help them to fulfill any lingering karma they may have with you. But uh, I remember going into a, a TV studio in India and uh, seeing there were a hundred people there and looking around me, they all looked like old friends. Some of them family members, some of them friends. But uh, it's wonderful to have this sense of kinship with everybody that you get when you have discrimination, when your mind is calm, when you're centered in yourself and you're no longer a boat being swept by the tides and by the winds, but still in your own inner self. And so Krishna goes on to say, Therefore, O mighty Andrajuna, withdraw your sense faculties, the power to see, hear, and so on from the senses themselves and from sense objects. Thus will your wisdom become firmly established. There's, it's interesting, there's not just the sense of sight, there's also the power to have that sense of sight. That is inside. There's the sense and there's the power behind it. Hearing and the power to hear. See is tasting and the power to taste. All the senses have their corresponding inner sense, which is the power to enjoy the world. We want to go inward behind that power even and understand that everything is just a manifestation and extension of the inner self. When you do that, then you find all your senses become enlivened. The sight you see will be more thrillingly colorful, delightful. Sounds will be more thrilling. Everything will be more beautiful. Your senses become very uh, keen when you have that inner sense of oneness. So, love God. This is what I want to say. There was some man who came to Yogananda with many questions, and they were all very intellectual. And he, the man read his first question. Masters, my guru's answer was, love God. So the man thought, well, and so he th asked his next question, love God. Third question, love God. And the master got up and walked out. And this man, ever since then, has said, well, even masters have their faults, thinking that was his fault. Without love of God, what can you know? What do you understand? Everything without love has no meaning. It's just a jigsaw puzzle. You have to go beyond the senses and beyond the reason and beyond the mind and understand that you and he are one forever in that bliss and all understanding will then be yours. Joy to you.